at CES this year, one of my goals was to kind of find all of the e-ink manufacturers or e-ink outlets that they had there and just see all the products, build relationships with the manufacturers, and also talk to e-ink, the corporation. But they did not really have anything there, even though they were listed as being there. And funny enough, remarkable, when I looked in the CES app on my phone, nothing came up, but they were there for one of the, I think it was like one of the showstopper days, which are the media days, which are before CES opens to the public. And I was there for that. So I was a little frustrated that that was something that I didn't see basically. But I think on the e-ink subreddit, a few weeks after I saw someone post an interview of something they did with Remarkable there, it was a pretty basic interview. But essentially, they're just, they were talking mostly about the Remarkable Paper Pro, which I'll actually be putting my long term review for out uh, maybe three, four days from now, maybe Sunday, I think. Going back to actually e-ink, I did get their contacts and I emailed them. One of the guys responded back and uh, told me he was going to get me in touch with someone on the marketing team. But I haven't heard back from them, and that was a few weeks ago already. So maybe I'll try to reach out again. But I actually saw My Deep Guide posted a video today. And I think this comes back to kind of the like e ink monopoly on the market, where there's no one that can really compete with e ink because it's such a proprietary technology and is pretty, pretty complex in general. I don't know. It, it, it's weird that they had no products there. And then I've seen videos recently. Uh, maybe I'll put some B-roll on the screen here of like other conferences they went to recently where they had e-ink products. CS is the biggest consumer electronics show in the world. Why would they have not nothing there? Like literally nothing. I went in, there were two empty rooms. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's just, it's a little odd. It, I found it strange. I don't know, maybe maybe just this year they couldn't do it and they'll like be back next year and, and do it. But they they had no one there. They were at least able to point me in the right direction to some other places that uh, I'll talk about in a little bit that did have e-ink kind of panels of Spectra 6. I would really like to arrange a trip because I actually don't live that far from the e-ink headquarters here. I mean, I haven't heard back from them. So it's like, that's not something they seem very keen on doing. So I don't know. If you've had any interactions with, with e-ink before, let me know. But I just, I, I, I do find it to be a little bit odd. I did pop by the Penstar desk there, Hanbon, which is like kind of the, I guess the, the parent company that makes the Penstars. Yeah, they, they have a new one that I think has a touch screen and is a newer panel, I believe. Super kind nice. Of slots in there. Yeah. And then this is a, is this a speaker or a microphone? Uh, it's going to be your speaker. Okay. And then your microphones are listed right on the sides. Yep. And then another one is that your um, your PPI is high end, so it's two two seven on the original one, and the other high to three hundred. Okay. So you really get a more clear, concise pressure differentiation. Yeah. Now, do you know do you know if this model here is going to be is it Carta twelve hundred? The, the screen tech so know? i believe it is let me confirm here okay. i'm thinking it is just because it's 10.3 yeah and it's just all it does is just add that the layer behind it to uh to get the touch sensitivity onto it. right very cool yeah it looks nice and then they also had a a4 size which looked interesting and they had a mini one as well so just chatted with them a little bit tried them out just give it a little, little test max nice Penstar Max. When's that coming out? Uh, maybe later this year or next year. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then I did pop by the Amazon actual like big area they had. It was kind of this like walkthrough thing. And I just, you know, checked out the Colorsoft and the Kindle Scribe 2. But it does look a little bit cooler and like maybe a little bit more premium. Unless you really like that kind of blacked out look. And just kind of wanted to see how good the color soft looked in comparison to some of the other gallery products I've seen. And the Kindle Scribe is a very, very minor refresh. And then one of the companies that Yink did point me to is uh, called Allura Tech. They are, I believe they're a Chinese company. Right now it's a power off. That's why it's a seven hours. Yeah, I can hold it. did have some Spectra 6 kind of panels there. They had these really like glossy ones and matte, uh, like a matte sample as well. The glossy ones looked bad in the lighting there. 
So this one's more matte, on but line, it's a little recessed here. Yeah. So some people prefer that or some prefer this. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. But I uh, do think this is a really interesting product. And it's, uh, from my understanding, it's going to be about half the price of the Ink Poster 13 inch one. They only demoed a 13 inch for this Allure Tech company. And so, yeah, for the Allure Tech company, I am in contact with two of the people there. I was just reaching out if they had more info about the product and if they were going to like have a web page and they said they were working on that. So I think they'll, they'll reach out to me when that is ready. And then I'll put out maybe a more full video, like with some of the more of the footage that I have and, and discussing the product actually a little bit more. Cause I didn't really have many concrete details like I did with the ink poster, but I think they mentioned some, some time around the April timeframe. Then I did an interview with a company called Exiger, which is a thing they call power foil that is able to do kind of indoor solar charging. So it can use artificial lighting like this or the lights I have back here, and it can actually harness power from that at a very low kind of voltage, but it does persistently do that. So, you know, whereas you might have something out in the sun for 20 minutes, you could have this inside charging like all day. And that was a really cool technology. And I actually saw not at the booth there, but I did see online after that they have created some like shelf label tags, like kind of like you see in like a, sometimes like a Walmart, a Target or a Best Buy where they have the e-ink kind of signage for the actual products. They actually have these modules they're able to power with the power foil that can, I think there's like 25 of them connected to each kind of individual, you know, uh, modular little, little shelf item thing you have. So that, that was pretty neat. I think powerful is something I'd really like to see in more actual devices. Cause imagine if this was just a solar cell, I've talked about this a bunch in like the super note videos I've done for accessories, but you could just put this by a window or even just like under some artificial lighting and it would always stay topped up because you know, these have good battery life or if you don't now, you know, but they would be able to kind of stay topped up and just like never have to worry about charging them pretty much, which I think would be really, really neat. And like some of these devices have uh, pogo pins already, right? So that is something that would be super easy to integrate. Supernote, for example, those standards are readily, are, are now available, I believe in the DIY zone and, and whatnot. They're really kind of pushing the DIY more. So that could be something really cool to see in the future. And then on The Verge, I also saw this like We Charge We Poster. I'll try to insert a little bit more B-roll here about it, but that was uh, that was super cool. But kind of like what I'm talking about, it can retain charge and have a static image that you change once in a while. I've already started to see a lot more, like I've gotten ads. There's like a uh, one that's called Blooming 8, I think that's coming on Kickstarter. There's another one that I'll throw on the screen here. I can't remember the name. But I think this is kind of going to be the year of like Spectra 6 display panels, mostly more for, for art applications because the refreshes are just not good on them in general. I'll, uh, I'll show it on the screen here as you can see the kind of refresh time that it has. E-Ink announced they're having an innovation prize for the next three years. They're putting out like 100 grand per year for the teams that win the, the prize. Um, I will link that below and I'll, I'll throw some, some details on the screen about that here but supposed to be e-ink innovation. And I think it's um, supposed to be for the greater good of the world generally. A little bit vague in terms of what like the projects will be, but I, uh, I do look forward to seeing what those teams are able to accomplish and what problems they try to solve essentially. However, did you know that Spectra 6 won display of the year last year? And I was able to take a look at it at CES. And that video is right here if you want to check out how good it actually looks, it will probably be the first commercially available Spectra 6 panel on the market. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.